Today on Rappler, a U.S. Senate resolution supporting peace in the South China Sea riles up China. Customs Chief Biazon reshuffles district collectors. And Russia grants asylum to U.S. whistleblower Edward Snowden. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The maritime dispute between the Philippines and China heats up Thursday as the two countries clash on the U.S. Senate's resolution supporting peace in the South China Sea. In a statement, Philippine Ambassador to the U.S. Jose Cuisha Jr. thanks the U.S. Senate's Foreign Relations Committee for passing the resolution unanimously. Cuisha says, while the U.S. has no direct stake in the dispute, it's important for the U.S. that freedom of navigation, unimpeded lawful commerce, and the observance of international laws are guaranteed. He also welcomes the U.S. Senate's support for the Philippines' decision to file a case against China. China? protests the resolution for, quote, sending the wrong message. In a statement, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunying says the resolution wrongly places blame on China. Hua adds, we urge relevant U.S. Sat senators to respect the facts and correct their mistakes so as not to make matters and the regional situation more complicated. China denounces third-party involvement in South China Sea disputes and pushes for bilateral negotiations instead. In its resolution, the U.S. Senate says it condemns the use of force in the South China Sea to, quote, assert disputed maritime or territorial claims or alter the status quo. The U.S. Senate adds it supports, quote, collaborative diplomatic processes for resolving disputes, including arbitration, which the Philippines resorted to. Interior Secretary Mar Rojas questions Philippine National Police Chief Alan Purisima's decision to clear the cops who cleaned up the site of the July 26 bombing in Cagayan de Oro. The blast killed eight and injured 46. On Tuesday, Purisima cleared policemen of irregularities just three days after Rojas' scolding. The cops cleaned up the crime scene less than 24 hours after the explosion. Rojas instructed the police to, quote, reconstruct the crime scene through interviews. On Friday, Rojas says he will ask Purisima to explain why he cleared the policemen. Talks of a premature cleanup raised concerns the bombers would not be found. Purisima initially called the cleanup, quote, an obstruction of justice, but changed his position a day later. He says the blast site was cleaned up only after police had gathered evidence. Customs Commissioner Rufi Biazon says he will announce the new assignments of customs collectors in two weeks. Biazon ordered 17 district collectors to leave their posts as part of the Bureau's revamped starting July 26. On Friday, Biazon met with the district collectors for the first time since the order. Of the 17 district collectors, 16 were present. Two of the district collectors refused to follow the order, citing possible disruption of operations, saying it's unnecessary to tender their resignations. They are Port of Irene District Collector Julius Permedles in Cagayan and Nino Aquino International Airport District Collector Carlos So. Biazon clarifies a reassignment does not mean the district collector did anything wrong. He adds, we will base the new assignments on the performance in the districts and the collections and the reports we have received on how they've done their jobs. In addition to the 17 district collectors, 37 sub-collectors were also asked to resign. The reassignment is part of reform efforts in the Bureau after President Benigno Aquino said the agency is inefficient and corrupt in his State of the Nation address. Sources tell Rappler Aquino is giving Biazon one more chance to prove he can change the system, although senior advisors of the president admit their thinking of tax chief Kim Anares as a possible replacement to Biazon. Rappler's editor-at-large, Maritas Vitug, says the Philippines is out of step with other Catholic countries. These states already passed laws allowing contraception. Here's her video blog. 
This week, Ireland passed a law that will allow abortion when there is a threat to the mother's life. The enactment of the Protection of Life during Pregnancy Act ended months of street protests and intense debates. The experience was divisive, but the Irish government forged ahead. Like the Philippines, Ireland is a Catholic country. In the 1980s, it passed a law that allowed contraceptives. Spain, Italy, and Portugal, all largely Catholic countries, have their own family planning laws. Spain legalized the use of contraceptives in 1978 and allowed state-funded family planning centers. Italy, where the Vatican is, also passed a similar law in 1975. Portugal considers family planning a constitutional right. The state is responsible for promoting knowledge on family planning methods. The Philippines is out of step with other Catholic countries. It's 2013 and the hard-fought RH law is still in limbo. And we're not sure the Supreme Court, where it is being challenged, will uphold it. This is Marites Vitug for Vitug Vlogs. Manila's bus ban eases traffic in the congested Philippine capital. Who benefits from the ban? Bea Kupin reports. It's almost afternoon rush hour along Espana Boulevard in Manila, but traffic flows freely. It's the result of a new policy. Starting mid-July, only buses with terminals in the city can pass through Manila. The city government revises the ban a week later. Only valid bus franchises are allowed to enter 10 at a time. Loading and unloading is allowed only at designated bus stops and terminals. Manila Vice Mayor Scott Moriano says the new bus ban will help turn a deteriorating Philippine capital into a gate to heaven from being a gate to hell. But commuters wonder, who really benefits from the new scheme? Workers and students who live in nearby cities are forced to change their routes. Buses from Quezon City without terminals inside Manila go around Welcome Rotonda and try their luck with passengers there. Joseph does not take that route because it costs him an extra 5 pesos. But taking a jeep home also means 20 more minutes traveling from his school to Quezon City. Bus. Bus lang. Isang sa kaya lang. Isang ride lang po yun. Pero ngayon, paano? paano jeep na lang. Kasi pag magdalawang sa kaya ko, mas mahal. Morena says the move will benefit everyone. Manila residents as well as transients, those who work and study but live outside the Philippine capital. Uh, that's why uh, we're appealing to them. Umaapila kami, buong kababa ang globe na nakikisuyo sa kanila. Baka naman hindi kalabisan na sila'y gumising ng 15 minutes or 30, minute, 30 minutes na advance sa kanilang regular schedule. BJ, a senior at a university in Espanya, says the bus ban has reduced his travel time. In favor ako kasi... Parang mas madali na yung transportation ko pa uwi at saka papunta, sa papunta lalo kasi parang mas maluwang na yung road. Halos na minus na 30 minutes yung travel time. He admits the scheme isn't perfect for everyone but says it's easy to work around it. There are jeepneys and FXs back to Quezon City. But for commuters like Joseph, change is not easy. And ganito nga, mahirap sumakay. Tapos pag jeep, nasabit ka pa. Moreno asks commuters to be patient. He says desperate times call for desperate measures. Our traffic problem, it's a cancer and we need drastic moves. Other modes of transport, trucks, jeepneys, tricycles and FX services will also be overhauled. The bus ban is only the beginning. Bea Kupin, Rappler, Manila. Russia grants a one-year asylum to National Security Agency leaker Edward Snowden in defiance of the United States. The temporary asylum is renewable and allows Snowden to live, work, and travel in Russia. The 30-year-old whistleblower finally leaves Moscow Sheretmeyevo Airport, where he was in limbo for months. The Wall Street Journal quotes White House spokesman Jay Carney, We're extremely disappointed that the Russian government would take this step, despite our very clear and lawful request to have him expelled. Legislators say it's a slap in the face of the Obama administration and call for retaliatory moves against Russia. The Wall Street Journal says Carney directly acknowledged for the first time the White House may back out of a September summit meeting in Moscow. It also quotes a U.S. official saying the risk of Snowden bartering more confidential information is real. In a, New York, in a New York Times roundup of social media reactions, a Russian social network offers Snowden a job in data security. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number two, a new Guardian report says a national security agency tool called X Keyscore collects, quote, nearly everything a user does on the internet. 
The Guardian reports, quote, a simple on-screen form and a broad justification for the search is all that's needed for an analyst to mine the NSA databases. The tool reportedly gives NSA the ability to intercept real-time internet activity and collect data like email, browsing history, and social media activity. In a reply to The Guardian, the NSA says its activities are, quote, specifically deployed against legitimate foreign intelligence targets. At number seven, Italy's top court convicts former Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi for tax fraud, confirming his prison sentence and shaking up the country's fragile political scene. In an emotional video message broadcast on Italian television, Berlusconi says the verdict was, quote, based on nothing at all. Berlusconi is charged with avoiding taxes from his business empire, Mediaset. He's also appealing convictions in other cases for having sex with an underage prostitute, abusing his prime ministerial powers, and leaking police wiretap transcripts to damage a political rival. And at number eight, U.S. President Barack Obama praises Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas for their leadership in agreeing to resume peace talks. The negotiators from Israel and the Palestinian Authority meet in Washington for talks they hope will lead to an agreement within nine months. The Obama administration's last foray into the conflict ended in failure when talks launched in September 2010 collapsed weeks later. For the full top ten, visit Raptor.com's The Wrap. Our social media post of the day is this photo of U.S. President Barack Obama's bunny ears. Obama congratulates University of Connecticut women's basketball team Wednesday after the girls win the NCAA championship title in April. Two players give the president bunny ears as they post for photos. Motorola introduces the much-anticipated Moto X smartphone. It's a move aimed at reviving the mobile, mobile device maker brought by Google. The Android-powered phone is the first Motorola smartphone created since Google bought the company. Google acquired Motorola Mobility in May 2012 for $12.5 billion. The Moto X will be released in the U.S. late August and will also be available in Canada and Latin America. Motorola's newest smartphone could be a formidable foe in a global market dominated by Samsung. An independent Silicon Valley analyst says, quote, On paper, this is arguably the best Android phone on the market. Well, every story on Rappler has its own mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator that's in the middle of the front page. It crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have gotten the most number of votes on their meters. If you take a look, these 10 stories have affected our readers the most emotionally. If, let's take a look today. It's, it's a very red day. We have a um, Forbes story yesterday, Henry C., Philippines' richest six years in a row. Interesting, 29% inspired and 34% angry. And the two stories, that have, the story that's gotten the most number of votes, again connected to the pork barrel scheme, Napolis' daughter owns 80 million peso LA property, 16% annoyed, 79% angry. That red leading to the mood of the day. Today, most people are angry. Well, that is Rappler Snoozecast for today, Friday, August 2, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.